So we wanted to do a video today about an incident that happened two years ago. We learned a lesson. We learned a lot from that experience. We wanted to share that experience with you. We broke down on I-70 coming through St. Louis. We were actually in a little community called O'Fallon, Wentzville area. And we're driving along as we do for thousands and thousands of miles and all of a sudden I hear this strange alarm noise scared us to death and I'm looking at the gauge immediately because I knew it wasn't my jacks or the air pressure because I'm familiar with those alarms the alternator had pegged out over past 20 volts I don't know what the actual voltage was but I immediately pulled off on the shoulder. We happened to luckily be at a entry ramp coming onto the interstate, so I was able to pull over to the entry ramp and then to the emergency lane. So I was a good way off of the uh, traffic, but we were still getting the breeze. So by this time, my heart rate is up here. My uh, blood pressure is up there with it. My panic level, I didn't know what to do. My first thought was we're too far from home to get it towed to the house to get it fixed. Uh, so I had to pull over and, and just sit there for a few minutes and think, okay, we got good SAMs roadside service, we've got FMCA emergency service, we've got our homeowners and our car vehicle insurance uh, that provides tow service, but it's limited to like 15 miles, I think, or something. Very short distance. And it's really not intended or designed to be pulling a 30,000-pound uh, motorhome. I called FMCA first. Uh, that was sort of the wrong thing to do. I should have called Good Sam's first. Start out with your Good Sam's or whatever. If you got AAA or whatever insurance that you have to provide towing, describe to them when you call what you are as far as the size of your rig and how much it weighs. and Explain to them what you're trying to do because the first place they sent the truck out to carry us to was a man's house that happens to do um, trailer tow behind trailers and it was in a neighborhood that you could not have gotten this vehicle into the driveway so fortunately the uh, tow truck driver called before he hooked up and decided to tow us there so he found out the situation and said, I can't tell you that you're going to have to call Good Sam's back. So I called him back, told him the situation, and they basically, after about an hour or two of us sitting on the side of the interstate, they could find nobody that would help. So we'd just have to stay in our motor home on the side of the road for a couple of days till Monday or Tuesday when they could get back to us. And clearly that was unacceptable. So. Uh, with a little more thinking and strategy and calming down a little bit, um, I, I was doing Google searches trying to help FMCA and Good Sam's find us a place to go. And we also had friends that were carpooling with us that they were behind us. So yeah, they pulled off with us just to uh, you know support us. They they we were traveling in a caravan style, so they weren't going to leave without us. Uh, so we found out there's a Flying J truck stop in less than five miles at the very next exit. So we went to the Flying J truck stop <clears throat> with the alternator overcharging the batteries. I tried to just idle the engine. I didn't want to rev it up to produce even more voltage. And I also turned on everything that would have used the cranking batteries, the headlights. Uh, I don't remember what all. Everything that I could that would help absorb some of the uh, voltage out of the batteries so that it wouldn't push all the current to the to the batteries and explode them. So anyway, we get to uh, the Flying J and I just barely pull into the truck stop and cut the engine off because I didn't want to you know, make the batteries explode. So we go into the truck stop, it's cooler in there, they have a lounge, we were sitting and making phone calls and doing Google searches and trying to figure out what to do. Um, and over the announcement speakers in the building, whoever owns the uh, tan RV in front of the Catskills needs to move their RV. So 
I go to the counter, I tell the lady the situation, look, we're stranded, it's broke, uh, I can probably move it, but I don't want to move it too far because of the situation. She said, well, there's a camping world at the next exit down, but that was about, I'm going to say 15 to 20 miles. I don't remember the exact distance. It's a long way. Uh, so we called them. <clears throat> they couldn't help because, the, as typical, any RV repair shop gives you the standard, we're booked for the next three months. We can't possibly put you in ahead of anybody else. Uh, so it'll be at least October, November before we can get to you. So that was unacceptable. However, it worked out perfectly that there's a huge diesel mechanic shop right next to the camping world. So she recommended I call them. I call them, I get a uh, weekend on call person that says, well, I can come out there and look at it, but I can tell you over the phone that I can't fix it this weekend. We'll have to have parts, we'll have to do diagnosis. And so long story shorter, we ended up working out a deal where that diesel truck stop organized the tow truck to come pick the motorhome up on Friday, on Monday, and uh, tow it to their shop. Good. I was able to take the toad loose, and we drove the toad, and our friends followed us home. Uh, so I left the RV there in their hands. I had to drop off the keys to the uh, Clark Power Services incorporated there in O'Fallon. Uh, they were tremendous. They knew what they were doing, they experienced, they, uh, they could see that I was stressed a little bit and, and assured me they do this all the time for big rigs, for uh, semi-trucks. This is no strange event to them to have to send a wrecker out and have it towed to their shop. So I left them the keys, left them in charge. About a week later, they had it repaired. I drove the Honda back up there, hooked the Honda up to the uh, tow bar and then drove the motorhome home from there and it's been good for two years and I hope it'll be good for for several more years so that that was the experience is number one don't panic number two call the right number the first time I recommend and we've recommended in a, in a do's and don'ts video that we put out a few months ago before you leave know the phone numbers don't wait till you have a breakdown on the side of the interstate to start Google searching. You may be in an area that doesn't have cell coverage, which we had just come through Wyoming. I'm just so thankful that we broke down where we did instead of in an area where there would have been no cell phone or no truck stops or no uh, service centers to help. We were extremely lucky at the Flying J that the lady was so nice. She told us where to go, where we could sit and stay until we could figure out what to do. And they were awesome to just leave it, let us leave our motor home parked there till the tow truck could come Monday. They actually wrote that down. So if there were any questions about it being back there in that space that um, the other people that worked would know that it was supposed to be there. And we were just extremely blessed that everything worked out good. We were taken care of by good people and uh, hopefully this will never happen to us or you again but if it does like Wayne said have those phone numbers ready get you a little notebook write them all down put them in the glove box put them in your cell phone somewhere where right off the bat you know who to call and you can just get it done and, and not stress like we did the main key is don't panic you, you can't mm -hmm. think rationally when you're in panic mode uh, this stuff happens all the time there are shops all over the country that are prepared to help you. Don't feel stranded. Don't feel alone. Don't feel like the Lone Ranger. Uh, know the right numbers to call. Don't let Good Sam's or any other insurance company tell you that you've got to sit on the side of the road for two days till they can call somebody during normal business hours to help you. Which, by the way, to, to add to that story, uh, Good Sam's basically told us can't help you call us back Monday when it's more convenient for us. So when I called the uh, Clark Power that the truck stop lady, well, she mentioned Camping World. Camping World recommended the Clark Power uh, engine service. The, I called them on my own. I scheduled this. I negotiated the price and the towing and all this kind of stuff. So then Monday, when it's convenient for Good Sam's, I called them back and they said, well, 
we're not going to pay you because you went around us. You didn't use us to negotiate and do all this kind of stuff. And so we went round and round and sent letters back and forth, like handwritten letters and copies of receipts and all that. And, and uh, basically it was because they told me they could not and basically would not help me on the weekend that I had, I got stranded, so I had to take action on my own. So for them to say they wouldn't reimburse me for the money that I spent, and it was just the towing charge, obviously the repair was was on me, and the repair was somewhere around $2,000. Uh, that counted the tow truck and the repair, and they you have to take the uh, drive shaft loose from the transmission when you tow one of these things because it puts a bind on the drive shaft. So the tow truck driver had to get under the vehicle, remove the drive shaft, and w it was a tremendous amount of work. Uh, so $2,000 for an alternator repair on a rig like this that had to be towed, uh, I thought was a, a fair price. I, if I would have been home, I would have changed it myself or got a couple of guys that know how to do that uh, here at home, and it would have been less for sure. But in the situation, I thought 2000 was... Uh, a reasonable price for what we had to go through so anyway know the numbers don't stress out don't panic uh, make sure you know how to use Google to find the next closest pull off or somewhere that you can get safe don't ever just stay on the side of the road because Good Sam's tells you you've got to by the way the end of the Good Sam's story is we finally came to terms they sent me a check to reimburse me for the towing part of the charges and all is well. Uh, don't panic, have the numbers, make your phone calls, and make sure you know where they're going to take your vehicle to. Uh, the first guy that came out was going to tow us to a man's house and put us in the backyard and they called this guy and he said, yeah, I can't work on diesel engines, I'm not a diesel engine shop. So uh, a lot of trouble getting the right guy to the right place. So communicate properly and over elaborate on situations so they know what they're dealing with. And happy trails. Happy trails.